uh, welcome everyone for our 14th lecture of our online course on Minus of Bani. So uh, today's lecture uh, will be handled by uh, Sri Vishnu uh, Balajandran. He is currently serving as a faculty at uh, Amrita Vishwadhyaya Pedam Amritpuri campus and he holds a master's degree in uh, international business. So he will be uh, talking about uh, Rajneeti in Ay uh, Ayodhya. So without uh, further ado, uh, let me welcome Vishnuji to the session. Over to you, Vishnu. Namaskaraya. As you know, today's uh, discussion topic is uh, Raja Nidhi in Ayodhya. It's indeed a beautiful topic. So Ayodhya is a city. It's a, it's a capital of, it was the capital of Kosala Kingdom. So uh, Raja Nidhi in Ayodhya means the rules, the governance, the administrative system which followed in the entire kingdom. Because Ayodhya is just a city, right? Kausala kingdom. And uh, uh, Kausala kingdom run by or administrated by Surya Vamsha. Raja Dharma, the system they follow, created by Manu, the foremost of mankind in earlier times. It's mentioned in Balagata itself. Even Sri Rama, Dasharada, Maharaj, all of them quotes Manu as the uh, lawmaker of their land. I don't know how many of you are really uh, studied or interested to understand what Manu Smriti is saying. Yes, there are a lot of controversies out there. And uh, to an extent, it's right also okay. uh, about classism and oh, inequalities. The Manuspurdi, the textbook uh, in the title Manuspurdi created a lot of issue in last two centuries, especially because it's edited many times. So here, Sri Rama quotes. Uh, this is Maharaj all the Ikshagu kings, Ikshagu dynasty. It's also known as uh, Regu Vamsha or Sun dynasty, Surya Vamsha. They all for, uh, followed the uh, law of Manu. Sometimes the Breaking India forces, uh, they say, they says that there was no idea of Bharat in ancient India. Only hundreds of small, small kingdoms. There is no uh, nothing uni uh, uniform uh, in uh, in uh, Kerala and uh, or Kashmir or Arunachal or Gujarat, and the same people went to all these places to Kerala, to Gujarat, to Kashmir, uh, to Arunachal, and say that uh, we will not allow you to go back to the law of Manu once this Manusmriti was here. Now it's not so. They are unknowingly accepting that. All the nation followed some, at least, some laws or rules or regulations of Manusmurdi in some time, some point of time. That's only uh, the mission of a Smurdi. Smurdi and Shruti are different. Smurdi uh, will change according to time and place. So uh, now we are following. The famous quote is now we are following Bhim Rao's study, the rules and regulations of uh, created by Indian Parliament and, and amended day to day. In the case of Ramayana, there are uh, five kingdoms mentioned in Valmiki Ramayana. In a small, there are a lot of mentioning about uh, Anaranya's kingdom or uh, anecdotes are going, Vishwamitra Maharshi's kingdom, but. Uh, the story taking place through the happened through these five kingdoms, and all the kings of these places are re representing different kinds of uh, kings. In the old world, the old world uh, kings are raised through their power. Maybe they are thieves. So one who the, the clan maybe started to uh, do robbery, one robber became the king of them. And he tried to expand his kingdom through robbery and uh, power. 
some uh, some countries they were merchants so they expand their kingdom through trade so the biggest the largest trader become the uh, powerful person and the eventually he became the king of that uh, country but in the case of uh, bharat philosophies changed into uh, kings and we know that kings and princes are turning back to philosophies they are not expanding or running the country through power not only through power their motive is not only profit in the case of archan their uh, motive is profit here bahujana sudhartha loka hidartha the administration trying to implement in the case of kosala and videha this was the stage videha uh, run by chandra vamsha janaka maharaj sringiveda puram guhan uh, kishkinda by bali and sugriva lenga ravana and vibhishana uh, total uh, about nine kings maybe bharata we cannot consider as a king because he ran the country as only the representative of dashrata and jama and such okay anyway he is mentioning the administrative style of nine kings uh, in five different kingdoms kingdom of kosala in ramayana balaganda itself you get a detailed description of uh, kosala kingdom and the city of ayodhya whenever vatmiki uh, maharshi quotes ayodhya uh, he describe ayodhya as a world renowned city this is exactly quote, uh, quoting from uh, vatmiki ramayana taken from iit kanpur website vatmiki ramayana mula shloka sathe so uh, to understand the raja niti other than an utopian concept the easiest way how it reach the common people here uh, now united nations plans about 17 sustainable goals to achieve before 2030 17 targets are there to achieve i don't say that uh, sri ramachandra's kingdom uh, kosala or ayodhya achieved all these things in 3000 years back itself and it's not fair because we don't have any data any kind of statistical data uh, is not with us to prove so anyway according to the description descriptions of valmiki maharshi about ayodhya and kosala through uh, Mah- valmiki maharshi's words and sri ramachandra's questions we are trying to analyze the social and uh, political ideas implemented in ayodhya at that time okay we can go with one by one of sustainable goals created by united nations the first one is no poverty in uh, valmiki ramayana balagandha sixth sarga says that no uh, there is uh, no one man in that city who is living in hunger and there are many other uh, sagas also there everyone has its own wealth their own wealth cows horses etc to sustain his family okay. he continues whatever it may be either a gentleman or a lady none is without wealth so each and every one have their own wealth clean uh, clean water and sanitation maharshi says that in ayodhya each and every one taking bath every day with oil massage regular regular oil bath who is doing uh, do, who is in ayodhya 
following immediately. And uh, there are distribution centers in temples and uh, centers for uh, storing and distributing water, clean water to the travelers. That's also mentioned in second chapter, second uh, Kanha of uh, Valmiki Ramayana. It's as a question by Sri Rama to Bharata. Make sure I am hoping that, hey Bharata, you will take care of all these shelters providing water to the travelers. So, poverty, zero hunger, clean water and sanitary sanitation. Okay, good health. There are many slokas mentioning that there are uh, no bala marana in Ayodhya. Bala marana means infant mortality. The inf rate of infant mortality is zero. Longevity is there for all of the people. All are with full of uh, enthusiasm and they are playing with their grandsons and children. That's also mentioned. And Maharshi continues, quality of education. Maharshi says about agriculture, trade, and different kinds of kula dharmas, uh, artisans or uh, uh, Blacksmiths, all these mentioned in different parts of Ramayana, uh, who mentioning the uh, traditional education system. And here, Maharshi says that none can be found anywhere in Ayodhya without the knowledge of six Shastras related to Vedas. Six Shastras, uh, Shiksha, Kalpa, Nirukta, Vyakarana, Chanda, Jodisham. Shiksha Shastra, which related to phonetics, how to speak. Kalpa Shastra related to ritualistic part, Nirukta, how we were derived. So all this knowledge is available for everyone in Ayodhya. Gender equality. Uh, actually, I, I don't know how many of you are familiar that right now, according to New York uh, City Council, more than 40 genders are there, not men, uh, women. 40 plus genders are there. Anyway, UN are focusing on um, gender equality of men and women. I don't know why. Most of their articles are based on that. Anyway, Sri Ramachandra asked to uh, Bharata Kumara that I hope you are receiving the women uh, well. Are they protected by you? And the next line may be a controversy. You can think, you can meditate and get a conclusion on that. Uh, I believe that Bharata is a king or a prince. That's why Sri Ramachandra said this instruction. And if he is a princess, Sri Ramachandra says say the same sentence about men here. That's my conviction. Anyway, reduce inequalities. Inequalities between different cities, different countries, different communities. This is one of the targets. And here, um, Provisional kings from different countries come to pay their taxes and trade. So, uh, hug all the countries surrounding and help them to uplift from the state of downtrodden is one of the targets. Modern day put forward to develop countries, and that we can see in Ramayana. Responsible consumption. Uh, using uh, food, water, income, everything is to a responsible manner. That's important. Here, Sri Ramayandra asking to Bharata, Bharata that, hey Bharata, I hope your income is less than your expenditure. And I hope your treasury not closed in another phone is and make sure that the money is not reaching undeserving people and he continue the grain the weapons in the case of weapon ayodhya protected by shatakni many of the commentators saying that shatakni is a missile one 
sorry, not missile. Uh, tank. Different kinds of tank because it's Shadak me. It's hard to capacity to uh, house and fire till uh, many people at the same time. Good jobs and economic growth. Uh, Sri Ramayandra asked Bharata, Oh dear brother, make sure that people who are living in agriculture, do agriculture and cattle rearing in their prosper well. Take care of them. You know that uh, the industrial revolution happened in uh, 18th century, uh, 19th, end of 19th century. Before, after only that, this all the industries happened and uh, going to another for gaining money. Till that day, this uh, agriculture, especially agriculture was the main income. India became one of the uh, fascinating destination of the people around only through uh, agriculture and trade. So take care of uh, people who are living through, uh, living, live by agriculture and cattle care, uh, cattle growing. The infrastructure of Ayodhya. We can see different slogans mentioning about uh, specialities of uh, buildings, infrastructure, roads in Ayodhya by Vatmegi Maharshi. The city shines covered with the well laid great royal highways that are always wetted with train and spitted on. Always, every day. The royal highway wetted and put flower on the path. And he continues The city is surrounded with gateways. The front yards of buildings are well laid. There's loads all kind of machinery, weaponry, and craftsmen. I think this is a blessing such as. Uh, Ayodhya structure, the uh, city created in the form of Ashtapa, a game, something like our uh, dice. So uh, the entire city is the town planning is based on that structure. And there is a mention of Vimana Sadrsham. Different uh, interpretations are there. Vimana Sadrsham. Uh, going with uh, like maybe like a space station or a seven story building or multi story building. Anyway, Maharshi describes about multi story building of at that time in Ayodhya. How utilized this city as well? That Maharshi continues in the 17th sloka of fifth Sarga in Balaganda. There is no place for ground unutilized. All the constructions are happened on well level land. In the case of uh, peace, justice, and strong institutions. Here, Maharshi describes how the ministers, the Sajivas, who rule that country. Uh, he's saying that there is nothing unknown to them. Everything is known to them. What is happening in the country and around is completely known by the ministries, even in the religion, in their own country or in others, either or about everything that is happening or has happened or that is going to happen. They are also really, uh, thinking of the futuristic planning, forecasting things happening around through agents, through spies. Uh, in Manuspuri, we can see that a king had to follow five O's, the great five O's of a, a king. One is Vayavyavrata. Vayavyavrata means in the name of uh, Vayudeva, the god of wind. A king must be like a Vayudeva, king must be like a wind. He had to reach each and every corner of the country through agents. 
to as the sister followed by uh, Ikshagu kings. He, here, the Shanta Maharaj and his uh, ministers, yeah, eight ministers. According to Manishmati, it's better to be with seven or eight ministers. Here, the Shanta Maharaj are eight ministers and uh, they are uh, very well aware about the things happening around. And the qualities of them, they are efficient in administration and their friendships are well examined by the king. And those ministers impose punishment even on their own sons if situation demands it. They are ready to punish their own children. And the sloka continued. In collection, uh, collection to the treasury and will try the armies they are grateful even an unfriendly person will not be tortured if you are not really did a crime. Even uh, uh, Sri Ramachandra asked to Bharata many times that make sure that uh, there is a person who is, did not did a crime will not get punished. Many other uh, sustainable goals are the life on land. We can see many slogans related to uh, life on land, like the, uh, describing cows, camels, pigs, bulls, horses, etc., donkeys, and how to take care of them. Is it? And once one uh, question from Sri Ramachandra to uh, Bharata is very unique. I hope you can read that. I hope you greet your teachers, the elderly, the 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 the, deities, the, the unexpected visitors, the trees standing at the crossroads. Imagine a culture is practicing for the last many thousand years to uh, salute the, uh, the trees. Especially in the crossroads, because uh, when the development happens, what we did cut the trees in the corner, in the crossroads, in the two sides. So the cross, the tree in the crossroad is the more we need to keep it properly. It's the most important thing that you have to greet. It's easy to cut, right? And uh, he is asking. Are you supervising the uh, woods inhabited by the elephants? And he is asking that uh, to Bharata that I uh, hope uh, you are taking care of the animals from the forest are not disturbing the, uh, maybe the villages and villages are not disturbing the wild animals. Idea of coexistence, how beautifully asked by Sri Ramachandra to Bharata. Partnership for the goals. The whole life of Sri Ramachandra is based on different kinds of partnership. He achieved all his goals through partnership, partnership with Vibhishana, uh, uh, partnership with uh, uh, Sugriva. Partnership with different uh, countries, different things, different administration administrators to achieve a particular goal. That's also important. And uh, we can see that according to United Nations, they put forward eight uh, understand is a good governance or not. Okay. Uh, is that accountable, transparent, responsive? For uh, these this eight criteria, as we can see in the Amayana, that there are a lot of stories give an answer to uh, these things. Especially, the, we can go one by one. Transparent. Once, uh, when Harada came back from his uncle's Yudhajit home, because he summoned by Vasishta Maharshi to report as soon as possible, when he reached, he came to know that all the things happened in Ayodhya in his absence. Suddenly he went to the balcony after some scenes in uh, uh, 
sense with Kaigei, Mata, and Mandara, etc. He went to the balcony and he announced that I am going to chorus to bring back, bring back my brother. Those who all are interested to come with me, you can come. The entire citizens of Ayodhya followed Bharata. It's a transparent thing because you don't, otherwise you don't, they don't believe that uh, Bharata may be lying that he is completely unaware and he, he is saying that tomorrow he will go to forest. Who knows? The transparency is not there. So he announces that who are interested, they can come with me. And it's happening. Participatory. Many times we can see that uh, Sri Rama and Dasharada is discussing things uh, in the call. You can see that and taking opinion from them and making sure that all representatives from different different communities are uh, here in the hall. A beautiful scene we can say take from Ravana Sri Lanka. There is a meeting is going on. In that meeting, uh, Ravana kidnapped Sita Devi. He didn't ask to anyone other than his uncle and uh, uh, some helpers. He didn't discuss anything in the uh, court. So the war started. So the discussion also started, right? The discussion is just started. Okay, and Ravana addressed the court and he is asking that you, all of you are familiar that there are three kinds of uh, leaders are there, especially in Mantra Lojana. Mantra Lojana means this kind of ministerial discussions. There are three kinds of discussions are going on. One is Adhyaksha or the president who is in the chair, he decides something and Put it, uh, put it for uh, for namesake in this uh, discussion, and uh, everyone have to follow that. We have to accept that. That is worse situation and worse leader leadership style. And medical style, Madhyama is the king or the person who is in the chair. He he decides something in his mind and he, he put forward the question to the court and slowly, slowly he bring everyone to his decision. Okay. He will he will give adamant, but uh, not fully. Everyone feels that he is flexible, but actually he was not. That is medical, madhyama, and uttama is there. Uttama means put uh, the question to the court and based on Shastra Vijara, Yukti Vijara, different kinds of discussion, opinion from public experts, experts and getting into the conclusion that is Uttama. And Ravana con continues that you know that I am a person always discussing you with uh, all these questions, everything. Actually, he was he didn't discuss anything with anyone. But how he is changing the mindset of the people in the court? Okay. Anyway, uh, so participatory, transparent, accountable, uh, responsive. Every time uh, Sri Ramachandra and the Sharada's quotations, we can see that the Sachivas, the ministers, need to communicate with uh, everyone. Follow the rule of the land. Effective and efficient administration. Uh, as a result, uh, it's uh, we cannot claim that uh, is zero hunger, zero poverty, hasn't percentage education, everything was there. At least the mindset, right? Uh, the lifelong inequity or uh, infant mortality, we can consider as the uh, one of the skills to understand the health of the society. At least these thoughts comes to the Rishi's mind about a welfare state itself. Remarkable. And uh, Sri Ramachandra 
is almost the, the final question to Bharata. These are the discussion things happens between Sri Rama and Bharata. When Bharata came to meet Sri Ramachandra, he directly started to ask some questions about his uh, administration. Bharata, now you are ruling in the country. Uh, these are the things you need to take and care. That's the things we are discussed in between. Anyway, he is concluding that a wise and learned king having obtained and ruled the entire earth properly by his right and by <coughs> administrating justice to the people. Indeed, ascends to heaven by detached from the mortal body. In India, we can see different kinds of things. Jindidevan, Janaka, Janaka Vahara, Shibi Chakravarti. Uh, in Jataka tales, you can see lot of uh, birth as a king and how he uh, bodhisattva, how he gave the leadership lessons to us. I don't want heaven. I don't want moksha. I just want uh, the whole well-being of my citizens. We can, we can see these kind of trails from Indian kings in Purana Idihasas. It's a really great topic. If you are uh, those who are really interested to lay in the idea of Rajanidhi, go through, uh, please go through Manishmati Raja Dharma and the duties of kings, etc. There are different kinds of smoothies are there, uh, Trismati, Vishnu Smoothie, etc. You can take these uh, these smoothies also. Go, uh, you can uh, so the communication between conversation between Sri Rama and Bharata and uh, Vidura Nidhi, the conversation between Vidura and King Dhritarashtra, Bhishma Upadesha, Bhishma's Upadesha's instructions to Yudhishthira when Bhishma was in deathbed. Arabic. These portions of our Idihasas, Ramayana and Mahabharata, give really an insight to uh, our idea of uh, Rajanidhi, justice, etc. Monarchy, in the current world, okay, most of the Arab nations follow monarchy, kings rule. Europe, Britain, France, to uh, Europe, to uh, Canada, over here, Australia, many developed and developing countries are following different kinds of monarchy, maybe constitutional, absolute, anyway, different monarchy system. But whenever says our ancestors and our ancestors king, sometimes uh, our minds are closed. Indeed, a democracy is a great system, but uh, we can take good from our past. The, uh, one of the wonderful thing I have noticed in Brihadaranika Upanishad, there is a mention that Bharata Varshasya Samagrasya Raja, Bharata Varshasya Samagrasya Raja, Emperor of entire Bharata. According to our history textbook, there is no such person who was the emperor of entire India. This uh, Shankaracharya's commentary, you can see this terminology. Bharata Varshasya Samadhirasya Raja. So, uh, even uh, in the Yuddhaganda, Vibhishna is confused to do uh, the last rites for of uh, Ravana because it, it may get a negative impression on him from Rama's side. But Rama said that Maranandani Vairani, all the Vairas, all the uh, enemies. It's end uh, after that. There is nothing like that. So you have to do, if you are not doing, showing interest to do, I will do the last rites of Ravana. We can see the stories of Shivaji Maharaj and uh, many Indian kings who followed the same pattern. They did the last rites of their enemies. Uh, Martanda Varma, the king um, 300 years back who ruled Shamanpur, 
related to Sri Padmanabha Swami temple. He went to Tanchavu to learn this dharma and he became the king. Before he uh, became the king of uh, properly pronounced the status of a king, he did, he learned the Manusmriti and Shastras, the Raja Dharma, especially the Raja Dharma. He went to uh, Tanchavu for that and came down. So something is there to connecting and each and every one of us through the path of righteousness. Mashwaya? Uh, on behalf of uh, School of Spiritual and Cultural Studies, I thank Vishnuji for this wonderful session and taking us through uh, the different episodes of uh, Rajneeti in Ayodhya. Uh, I also thank all our uh, students for attending this session. Uh, so we can wind up the session uh, with the Shanti Mantra. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shri.